So far, we've seen quite a few examples, but let's be honest, they haven't been that visually appealing. In the next couple of lectures, we're going to see how we can apply styling to our elements and make things look just a little bit more interesting. We're first going to start out by adding inline styles to elements with the style HTML attribute. Since we're going to bind an HTML attribute, we're going to use the vbind directive again. I have added a simple div element in advance, which is 200 pixels in width and height. And the first thing I want to do is to set its background color to blue. So I'll begin by writing the vbind directive here and for the style attribute. And when binding to the style attribute, the expression can be either an object or an array. Let's begin by seeing what the object syntax looks like. The keys in this object should match the CSS style that we want to set. And the value should be an expression that resolves to a value. In this case, the key will be background color. So I'll add that background dash color. As in normal JavaScript, we need to enclose the key within quotation marks because it contains a dash. Note that I will use single quotes here so I don't have to escape double quotes, as they would otherwise interfere with the HTML markup. So that was the name of the style that I want to apply to the div element. For the value, I can simply write red enclosed in single quotes as well. Like this. So, this will give us a red square. Of course, this is not all that useful, because we defined the color directly within our template. If that's all we needed, we might as well just have added the style directly to the HTML style attribute. What's more useful is to actually bind to a dynamic color. Let's create a data property containing the color instead and bind to this property within the template. So I'll add the data object with a color attribute and I'll just write blue here. Now I just need to write the name of this property as the expression for the background color style and the result will be the same, only blue. So if I go up here, remove this string, I'll just write color here and run the code. And now we see a blue square. Now of course this is not too useful either because we have hard coded the color within our view instance. But what this enables us to do is to change the color dynamically. And you guessed it, when doing this, Vue.js will automatically update the style because we have now bound the background color style to the color data property. To show you this, I will add a button with a click event listener, which changes the color. So new button element with the text change color. And let's add a click event handler for the change color listener, which I will add in the methods object down here. Oops. And here I'll add the change color function. And within here, I'll just say if the color is currently blue, then I'll set it to red and otherwise, whoops, else I'll set it to blue. And if I click the button now, we'll see that the background color of the div changes. As you can probably imagine, it can quickly become difficult to read if we add more properties to the object within the template. To solve this, we can simply move the data object to a data property and refer to this property within the template. So I will call the property styles. So I'll add it here. And in the process, I'll clean up the code a little bit because we'll no longer need the button that changes colors. So I'll remove that. And now I can change this expression here and I can simply write styles. And I can also get rid of this event handler down here. So let's test it out. And we do see a blue square. Before proceeding, did you notice that we have a style attribute in pure HTML alongside the binding 
to the same HTML attribute. This works because Vue.js merges the styles on our behalf before applying the styles to the DOM. So the styles that are applied to the DOM are the result of merging the HTML style attribute with our style binding. The same applies when using classes, which we'll see in the next lecture. That being said, let's move the width and the height to the styles object as well, just to keep the styles in one place and thereby make things a little easier to maintain. So width was 200 pixels and the same for the heights. And now I can remove them up here. And I should see the same result. And indeed we do. So much better. This is all great for simple examples like this. But what if we needed to make use of some other data properties to determine the styles? Perhaps we always want the width to be half of the height or something like that. Of course we could be lazy and just change the width to 100 pixels. But that wouldn't be much fun, would it? Since we cannot access other data properties from within our styles object, we need to do something else. Can you guess it? The answer is a computed property. So let's change our data property to be a computed property instead. So I'll go down here, I'll add the computed object. Basically, I'll copy the styles here. And I need to change it to a function, like so. And let's say height equals 200. And now I can return an array with these properties and copy these up there in the object. Sorry, I meant to return an object, of course. And as for the width, I can add a calculation here saying the height divided by 2. And here I can simply concatenate the height plus pixels. And running this code, we'll now see that the width is half of the height. The point is that you can either use a data property if your styles do not depend on one another, or a computed property if they do. I mentioned that it's also possible to use an array for the styles instead of an object. This is perhaps slightly less common, but let's take a look at how you can do it anyways. If we add an array instead of an object, this array should in fact be an array of objects, where each object uses the same syntax as we've just seen. The point of this is that you can override styles. So I'll add a new data property named more styles right here, more styles, and it's going to be an object. And I'll just make it add round corners to the div by using the border radius CSS style. So border radius, I'll set it to five pixels. And in the template, I can now add the two objects within an array. So I'll add square brackets here and I'll add more styles. I could of course also have referred to either a data property consisting of an array or a computer property which returns an array. What this does is that it merges the two objects together. So if I run the code, you'll see that the div still has the same styles, but that it now also has round corners. This is because Vue.js merges the objects together and it's worth noting that an object in the array takes precedence over any objects that are added before them. So if I were to change the background color to red within the more styles object, we would see that the background color changes to red, even though we had already defined it to be blue in the first object. So let's try that out for a second. So here I'll say background color, I'll set it to red, run the code, and the div changes to red. So I'll just remove this again. It was just to show you that what I said was true. Now, something interesting to note is that Vue.js automatically prefixes the CSS styles with any vendor specific prefixes to ensure maximum browser compatibility. This means that when using inline styles like this, Vue.js got you covered. So you don't need to worry about using tools like auto prefixer 
which can be difficult to use with inline styles. And with that, let's move on to seeing how we can apply styles with CSS classes.